this will be digitally out there for thousands and thousands of years if you think about it mm, yeah you know if we only had uh this kind of technology back around the time of the crucifixion we might have a better i, I ponder things too much Dimitri Downing back at Nita Unshackled <laughs> with George. George Tanchev, Pure 5, fast, faster, better extraction of cannabis. The co hostess with the mostess. And we have another cool, you know, Benzinga's buzzing. There's people moving everywhere. There's great companies. There's industry leaders. There's a lot of talk about a lot of different things. And again, another one of these wonderful Nita podcasts. We get to introduce you to a couple of people that we met here at the, the show. Actually, we've known each other from before the show, but are doing some really cool things with their companies. And tell you about their journey into cannabis and what their companies are now and their new projects, etc. So let's start by introducing you to Dustin. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Doing well. Uh, yeah, my uh, my roots are all the way back in Arizona. Yep. I went to U of A. I grew up in Tucson, um, and I cut my teeth. What did you do in high school? Uh, Mountain View. Mountain View. What year? Uh, 2001. Did I know that? <laughs> dun dun dun. I went to Amphi. No shit. Yeah. Wow. Like bang. Nick- Let's yeah, go on. Sorry, go ahead. Pr- practically neighbors. Yeah. Uh, but I, I cut my teeth in the cannabis industry uh, before it was popular in the late 90s and the 2000s. I was a, uh, we'll say, a spirited gorilla grower until the poli- police asked me to stop. Now, thankfully, it didn't ruin like my that. life. Um, flash forward, I had the opportunity to jump in, and I, I had a sweat equity cut in Hydrotech, Arizona. So I found it. Hydrotech, Arizona. What year was that? That uh, was 2014. I founded that hub. Um, and I really, I blew the, the hub up. You know, we went from having no funds to we were cash positive within a year and a half. And by year three, we were making at least $4 million a year. And what was happening in Hydrotech? What did you guys do there? Uh, we were selling. Uh, we were like a smaller version of Sunlight Supply at the time. So we won't, didn't sell Gavita. We sold Agrilux Lighting, which okay. both those brands were bought by Hawthorne. So that, that's really what happened is I, I built up my name in the industry. I became known for being a lighting guy. And, right. then, and then Hawthorne bought everybody. Yes. Is Hawthorne buying everybody? No, Hawthorne's still. Hawthorne is struggling. Are they? They're not doing as well. As they, I mean, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, they're struggling. They, uh, they have, uh, they probably have about, I don't know, ten percent of their, their sales force left. Um, oh wow! And, and, and well, in the past, oh, it was, yeah. it, it was, you know, it's a downturn in the market. People are shutting down cultivations and stuff. Yeah, yeah, things are becoming tougher. And um, while things are booming, as we know, during say, uh, the explosive cannabis market, money was easy and. Uh, now we're in a recession, so it gets tougher. Yeah. So where are you with? Who are you with now? So now I am with Phillips. Phillips LED. How did you, the Phillips? The Phillips. Yes. Like Which the, ev- everyone's like wondering. The Phillips from like the seventies and eighties. Yeah, as in like you buy your light bulbs, all your medical equipment. We're that eight billion dollar conglomerate around the world. So our Horty division does about two to three hundred million in sales into various different Hort projects, food production, ornamental <laughs> flowers. Cannabis has been a sticky wicket because we are a global company. We have to not piss off nation states that may be partnering with us. Right. So it's a slow process, but we are now officially promoting ourselves into cannabis. Yeah. And that, that's why we are here at Benzinga. Phillips. Wow. That's kind of a big deal. Yeah. How long have you been with Phillips? Uh, I've officially been with them for six months, but I sold their products via my relationship with Agrilux for about three years. And so do they have like a cannabis team or how's that? How do they structured under Phillips. Yeah, we're not. We're, we're all that, around it. I don't just do cannabis jobs. Yeah. You know, I work with uh, with Syngenta, genetics producers, large-scale veggie producers. But cannabis is certainly one of my fortes, and it's it's a passion of mine. And it's it's something that will always be part of my life and part of my focus. And it's a uh, Phillips is ultimately like the, it's the cream of the crop. It's where I want to be. So we're here at Benzinga specifically to, to let people know that we're officially here, and we are offering financing via our Dutch banking partners. So you guys are offering financing for lights? Correct, for lights. For yep. via your partner. Sorry yes. about that. My, and, I you know, working at Hawthorne and being involved in just about every commercial build, I've seen the financing that's out there. It's usually about 20%. It's typically loan sharking rates. Ours is the same financing that we offer, say, <coughs> large-scale food producers. Mm-hmm. So if we're going to sell 100,000 fixtures up into a tomato producer up in Canada, we offer them the same financing. Starts at five point five percent. Wow! Six months no pay when the lights show up on site. Five year term, ten payments, and uncollateralized. That, that's a pretty damn good offer. And I want to get talk about the quality of the product and the differentiators between lights. But first, I want to introduce Deontay to the audience. Give him a chance to introduce himself. And you guys ask each other questions. Yeah. You know that that's the tough part. <laughs> you know the unexpected questions. Uh, so Deontay, you're with Vibes 
Vibes B&B. Yes, sir. And what is that? So Vibes B&B is a, a, a cannabis-friendly platform that we built uh, for short-term rental and... You got to get a little closer here. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, v Vibes B&B is a, like a cannabis-friendly marketplace platform for short-term rental hosts and Airbnb hosts in this all over the world, pretty much. We do uh, we, we let people list their properties onto our marketplace that allows properties to be cannabis accessible so that when people travel, they'll have more cannabis friendly options to uh, explore as opposed to you know, not knowing the rules when you go to Airbnb and you search up, you know, different properties and you're yeah. not necessarily sure what the cannabis rules are. You know, smoking and non smoking is really obscure. Right. So uh, we're building a solution for hosts to have more flexibility with their users about the specific amenities that they offer in the cannabis field. Is it launched yet? Or are you operational? Yeah, we're, we're launched. We're operational. We launched on 420 at, uh, okay. la at 2021. Last year? Oh, two yeah. years ago. Last year. Uh, we've okay. been doing really good this year. We did 225 listings, 26 states. 225 uh, in 26 states. Anything internationally? The, no, I mean, Jamaica, Thailand, we've had some people reaching out to us from those areas that, you know, when Thailand announced that they were going legal, I had some people reach out to me from an article that got posted about me. And they, people are reaching out to me from different states to actually list their properties the entrepreneurs on the though. website. It's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, I dig it. It's really good. We did um, $110,000 last year uh, in nine months, uh, average of 30 to 50 bookings a month. And our average uh, booking value is about five hundred and seventeen dollars, and uh, we have like about sixteen hundred users so far. So we're doing really so, good. That sounds like she went on Shark Tank or something. Yeah, I know. That's the goal. You know, we're, we're trying to get there, man. We're, I, we're, I got I got family members that can't travel without cannabis due to health conditions. Right. They would one hundred percent use your service. No, nah, right. <laughs> and you're not plant touching. So Sometimes I like tell okay. you, know, cannabis is going to be what thirty five billion dollar industry by twenty twenty five, and now that all of the states are giving more you know legal and medical options to people automatically where do you go to book a 420 friendly reservation there isn't really an answer for that it's not google it's not airbnb so we want to be the all-in-one marketplace for all cannabis related information but focusing on short-term rentals first Maybe that's really interesting and, yeah. and how does it work you go there you book the property and you find it in a drawer Right. Can you smoke in the bedroom? No, no, no. So, you have the so eventually, <laughs> what, what, what we're doing first is we built a mobile app and a website. So you can go on the website. It doesn't come with the cannabis. Not yet. Oh, okay. Once so it becomes, it's we're like waiting for recreational <laughs> uh, legalization so that we can turn a, on our bud option on the app. That's a premium membership. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> premium yeah. membership. Right. That was my guy saying we, we're going to be installing some memberships soon so people can have access to more benefits and more features and things like that. But um, it's an amazing thing. You know, it's, we're, we're, we're a part of a social equity initiative and we're just bringing more business opportunities to the forefront so where are you based out of so we're based out of miami here we're local to miami yeah. uh 76 properties here with uh, about 20 different hosts in this area but we're looking for more hosts that want to open up their properties to be more cannabis accessible uh now is there like a, a difference between vaping allowed slash uh, flower allowed smoking allowed so on the platform via house rules and filters you'll be able to see which host allows wake and bake experiences which ones want designated smoking areas outside you know you go to a mansion that's like you know a thousand dollars a night they probably right. don't want you to smoke outside because the insurance is going to be crazy if you damage something yeah but for the most part um yeah that's it that's a really really great concept what Thank were you, you doing man. before you started that so I've been an Airbnb host bef since 2016. Oh, but one, I, it's one of those guys they, they know things like the level of expertise and yeah, they bring it to yeah. the cannabis space. Yeah, okay. man. And being an Airbnb host, you know, I started by just renting a one bedroom, and then eventually a lot of people just said, "Man, I got canceled because my of bringing my my five grams of bud." So before this, I was doing a uh, Uber and Lyft. And then that's how I found out about Airbnb. And I did my first Airbnb drive. Somebody's like, "Oh, you should try out." Um, uh, uh, Airbnb, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then 12 months later, I uh, started this whole new venture that's been three years successful now. So, Yeah, people must be, like, really supportive. Are you looking for investors? Is that what you're doing so here at Benzinga? We, I'm already sponsored by a nonprofit that made the app for me. So now we're looking for an actual financial partner to take us into all of the states right. instead of just Florida. You know, we want to develop a good ground here in Tampa, Orlando, St. Augustine, uh, Kissimmee. Orlando, Jacksonville, and then go to Atlanta, Jersey, Vegas, uh, New York, California, Colorado, 
So, yeah. That's pretty cool. What do you think, Dustin? I mean, you've been around for a while. You've seen some different stuff. I, I think it's awesome. Like, like I mentioned before, I have some family members that have health conditions that yeah. dictate where they can and can't go. Right. So sometimes they can't. Like, it's a, it's a, it's my brother's wife. She just can't go with it to some places. And if they can plan this out for their vacations, it's uh, it's immediately usable because that is a hassle for anyone that is a, where cannabis is a must have. Right. Absolutely. We know that cannabis is a is a big deciding factor on where people stay now just because of it becoming more accessible medically and recreationally across all these states. So, so you don't use the actual Airbnb platform. You had to like redo the whole thing. So I, right? I use both personally because, you know, if you're going to be in the hospitality industry, you're going to use all of the available tools to keep your house booked. Right. But we're just an additional OTA, like an online travel agency. We want to just be the go-to for cannabis travel. So if, if people want to tr- plan a cannabis vacation, the first thing that they're going to do is go to the Vibes B&B website or the mobile app to at least find out where they're going to be staying. And then eventually we'll add experiences and different things to do that are also cannabis friendly. And why vibes B- B&B? I mean, it seems kind of obvious, but is there a particular... Well, it's just good vibes, man. That's it. Yeah. You know, just sharing the good vibes in the house. You know, it's really between the guest and the host. You know, a, a communication standard. You know, everything is about communication when it comes to cannabis because that's really what people are looking for. You don't necessarily, you can't go to Airbnb and talk about it through the app because they ban you immediately as soon as you mention anything cannabis related. So we just opened up the communication aspect of it. And now people can be comfortable knowing that they can book someplace without having their, cave, their stay canceled. That's very, very cool. Well, we really appreciate it. You have much- well, I bet you you could partner with, with some farms. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Some farms, yeah. Man, it's, it's so hard because everything is still illegal, rec- you know, illegal federally. But once federal opens up and people can start to do things across the state lines, we want to partner with a lot of supply chain farms that can deliver straight to the Airbnbs via like either dispensaries or mobile solutions that people open, like vans and trucks. Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, I thought you meant like farms like pitch a tent out of the farm. Well, not necessarily <laughs> pitch a tent, but I mean, we're in a downturn right now, so some people are hurting. And if it's legally allowable, some folks might actually look to have, they would host people at, you know, not in the cultivation, but maybe near it. <clears throat> yeah. And so right. you could imbibe and be right there and have the, the cultivation experience. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I know there's a, we just had somebody earlier who's doing like a new Denver hospitality social equity thing you remember james yet yeah is that the uh the lounge the cannabis lounge guy it's, it, it's a new licensing it's not the lounge licensing okay it's actually like a hospitality okay thing. i've been to some place called tetra lounge in, in denver i think that's like a cannabis lounge that they do over there yeah that's the only person i know that does you know, that consumption and stuff no it's a really cool project so you're looking for investors are you looking for strategic partners what do you so the biggest thing that we're looking for right now is really media and press I just, I'm more brand awareness. You know, a lot of people love the product. I just need it, it to be in front of more eyes. Well, this will get you in front of 35,000 eyes. So. Yeah, well, that's good. If you're, if you're so a property we, host, or you're, you're a... We have a good it, reach. Yeah, Ria? Okay. Yeah, we, we get out there. He doesn't know Mita. He, Dustin knows Mita. Everyone knows Mita. Yeah, I know Mita now. Okay. Mita well, and well, Vibes BNB. Let's go. So let's go back to Phillips on that note. I'm just kidding. Uh, but but what, what, why is Phillips... You've been around lighting for a decade yeah, yeah. you know it like the back of your hand yeah why yeah. is why is phillips better what are the differentiators uh when being a cultivator i always use phillips products and most cultivators have they all started with double-ended lamps which was invented by phillips and they use ceramic metal halides which was invented by phillips and they're now using leds that are all copycats of phillips products nice. it's less recognized in cannabis because phillips is not a marketing company Right. We're, we're an engineering R&D firm. In fact, if you tell them, they say, hey, why don't we go aggressively market? It doesn't even register to them because our products sell so well on their own. But we do need to do a better job of putting that message out there so people understand that we are the originator for all the modern lighting that people are using in port. So Philips does LED. That's yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. That, that, that's our exclusive focus. Uh, we're phasing out mm-hmm. our HEDs. We still offer our lamps, but... Long-term planning, there will not be HIDs in five to ten years. Okay. So, when all the LED, because I remember when everybody started experimenting with LED in the cannabis states, like 2011, 12, 13. And those were all right. crappy aquarium diodes and they ruined plants. Yes, that's when it started right. and people got a really bad taste in their mouth. Yeah. And, but yeah. that, but those, uh, but the lights, the LEDs weren't made by Phillips back then. No, no. And even as Phillips, we don't make the diodes. 
Okay. So like everyone sources the same Osram or Samsung diodes. We do make drivers and people source those from us. The differentiator in the future is scope and ability to do research and intellectual property. The future is utilizing real data to produce tunable dynamic spectrums that will improve the crop. When your crops are outside, it's a dynamic spectrum. It's fil the, the sky filters the actual, like the, the frequency of light that you see. As it sun sets, it gets more in red, the far red. There's all these effects <laughs> that are currently unknown and can't be triggered in the cultivation environment. Everyone says, I got white light, I'm gonna set it and forget it, that's the best. It's not the best. The best will be proven through R&D. So we've actively been doing R&D into cannabis. We have over six R&D sites across the globe. Nice. That includes Phillips has six R&D sites across the globe? North wow. America, wow. Europe, and in Australia. That's impressive. Congratulations. So, Congratulations. On it. so ask any other lighting company that's in the cannabis space, ask them, do you have real R&D facilities that you fund with real researchers? And their answer will be no. Right. If they're being honest. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, all, all that, all that, it's a game over for everyone else. I wouldn't go as far as game over, but I, I think that, hey, we're in a downturn. The big dogs have arrived. What is well, well, I mean, do you think, are there going to be any other Hawthorns going around buying Gavita and Lux Lighting for $200 million a pop? I think a lot of people saw those acquisitions happen, and it looks really enticing. And if you can go and make a splash on Instagram and get lots of eyeballs like these companies do, Maybe they'll get bought, and I think that that is a major goal for a lot of these brands. So when did Philips start like uh, getting more actively publicly involved? In uh, it officially started in 2018, but mm -hmm. it was very quiet. Like we have, uh, we sold Glasshouse Farms. Yeah. They're down in Southern California. I mean, you're probably familiar. They just yeah, acquired a 105-acre yeah. howling. They're they're going to be the largest producer in, in the Southwest. We work with Michigan Pyramid up in Michigan. They're 200,000 square feet under glass. It's just again, we're not loud. And in, in, in today's modern era, if you're not on Instagram, you're not totally loud, the impression people get is that you're non-existent. Yes, that's absolutely true. Yeah, and, and it's important. just not our forte. Again, we spend all of our money on the research on the R&D. Right. We want to own the intellectual property. And if we're a little bit slower to the market, it doesn't matter. Because in the end, we'll, well, like we're here, we're slow, but we're gonna be here when most others are gone. That, you know, and, and I'll, I'll ask you this because I know there's a lot of types of cultivation from sun to greenhouse, greenhouse with lighting and indoor, just full on lighting, all types of lighting kind of stuff. What, where do you see the future? Is it like a hybrid of sorts? I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. To, I, I think that because uh, I, I just have, we had some New Jersey people on here, and they were converting a sixty thousand square foot cultivation greenhouse, and they were adding lights. And I thought that that would like you know that's the you know, that seems to be the future rather than just indoor or greenhouse. You know what I'm saying? I, I think indoor will always have a, a place because for some people, they really need that indoor to produce the top shelf. Yeah. But let's just say you have a 100% of your grow. I would say in the end, 10% goes towards that really high shelf flower. Right. The rest of it needs to be greenhouse or outdoor for your, your extract production. Mm -hmm. I mean, pay attention to what happens this year in Canada. I don't know if you're aware, but this is the first year that Columbia can export their cannabinoids to Canada. Oh, yeah, really? Yes. Columbia can export their cannabinoids to Canada. What does that mean? Oh, that wow. mean what, what does that mean for the market? What so, I mean, that means this is one of the first times where you have a... Columbia has a natural environment to produce excellent weed. Right. They can blow it up in, in fields and in inexpensive greenhouses. Wow. Probably at pri price points that we cannot here in the U.S. But those greenhouses or will still have lights, though, right, to increase the... I, yes, some of them do, yeah. but some of them don't. I mean, in the end, it, to get extract, extract's extract. You could you could blow it up with 100 acres in cannabis and still get the same molecule and use that in your extract pens. So it's going to come down to economy of scale, and it, it'll be interesting to see how global markets affect things because we may get imports that come in. So then it makes sense. Uh, people will have indoor grows to produce high-quality craft weed, but maybe we can't compete with the imports that are coming in for, from Colombia. I You know... How these? I'm waiting for my scientists to jump in here. Cause yeah, I was listening so carefully. <laughs> That's a lot of things here. Right. Yeah, no, no, uh, it's I, a lot of things for you. I'm not. I'm not a scientist. Okay, so you got to help me out here. Uh, I'm thinking about the regulatory stuff and the market structure stuff and how it will change things. And and you know, it's it's so dynamic. But what do you think? Well, my question uh, is more on the technical side, like how, how people can uh, choose a light. You know, there is a light for vegetation, there is a light for uh, germination, there is a light for blooming. What exactly they need to look into, what type of light is best? Maybe they're universal too. Well, we, we have uh, 
Well, we have the R&D to develop specific lights with specific spectrums, and now we're developing fixtures with tunable spectrums. We use software, usually Dialux or AGI32. Think of it as like CAD software, but for lighting, mm -hmm. to where we can design the exact lighting, the exact placement to produce the exact amount of light per crop type that you need. So we have spectrums of light developed for certain types of lettuce and microgreens and so on and so forth. And we will, we're developing those for cannabis as well. So you can beat Colombia by the sunlight. Well, you never know. It, it all comes down to regulation, like, like you're mentioning. It, will the governments do some stuff to protect the companies here? We'll see. It's going to be a process, but Canada's kind of like the canary in the coal mine. Right. right. That's why I would keep an eye on. But to jump back to your original question, where is it moving? Um, all growers need to consider themselves pro-hort growers, whether they're cannabis or not. Pro-what? So hort growers. Pro -hort. Like there's a, there's a division in some people's mind. We're, we're cannabis and we're not tomatoes. Yes, there's different considerations. You're growing oil when you were a cannabis grower and you're not really doing that when you're tomato. But from a business point of view, you have to pay attention to your inputs and your outputs just like you're, you're a standard pro-hort veggie grower. And I recommend all cannabis producers start going to hort or veggie oriented shows like uh, cultivate because you're going to see how things are presented in those markets and it it can be different there is the uh you ever heard of the cannabis tax anyone ever heard yeah, that term i have yeah yeah so yeah. growers will gripe about it they'll go present they'll talk with the company as a cannabis grower and they'll go oh, yeah, yeah. price 30 percent higher than right. if they had just been pretended to be hemp or cannabis lettuce pump, yeah yeah exactly so I, I mean, that's premium, what cannabis premium. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like start start thinking lean, like those guys who have made it, growing right. tomatoes, lettuce, so on and so forth. And those guys that do that will win, and those guys that do that will probably have to utilize a lot of greenhouse and outdoor to make it tenable. Right. Over time, we got to talk, and, and because there's, I mean, you are look. I, I'm not thinking about going into cultivation, getting involved in lights, all that kind of stuff. But your knowledge blows my mind. Any, anybody. <laughs> Anybody who's thinking about doing something with lights should call you first, no matter what. That's I'm not, pretty much clear. I'm not, I'm not going to say no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and tap your brain because, <laughs> yeah, no, because there's, there's, we'll talk about afterwards about this project that I think you might want to be involved in. Sure. But yeah, but Dustin, man, your level of expertise just blows my mind. Yeah. Do, do, you have I, any questions to Dustin? Yeah. How do people reach out to you? Uh, good, good question. <laughs> You know, we, facts, we have a lot of calls. We, we, we handle everything. Yeah. But I mean, you, you can just reach me by reaching out. You can look up Signify, which is the official name for Phillips Horticulture. Um, but you can just look me up on LinkedIn, Dustin mm -hmm. Forney, D U S T I N F O R N E Y. There's probably only one or two of me with my last name on there. And Deontay, how do people reach out to you? So you can find me on Instagram, uh, VibesBNB, or check out the uh, my personal Instagram, Dion underscore D E O N underscore M A C K. Well, you guys, uh, you know, this has been another great example of the kind of people uh, that you find here in the Benzinga community. Yes, sir. And we appreciate you guys being here. And uh, we look forward to following your journey over the years, seeing how things progress. Next year, you come back, there's 500 listings. Yeah. And uh, and well, I don't know. I'm Phillips pretty big. I'm not sure what's up from there. Well, as far as you and I are concerned, I'm coming back out to AZ, and I want to continue to talk with you and Mita about, about working together. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, yeah, thank you guys for joining us and enjoy the rest of the Benzinga show. Yeah, shout this out is, to Benzinga, man. Yeah, another, she, another second annual uh, successful conference. You know, like this Always. isn't a slight against any other show, but this this in terms of ratio of quality contacts I've had, this is the best show I've been at in eight years. Yes, sir. Great individual. What? Scholarship. Oh, Benzinga scholarship. What's that? Yeah, so I applied for the the social equity scholarship here in Benzinga, and I got accepted. That's how I got uh, the invitation to come nice, here. Bro. Yeah. I uh so last year we only had 93 listings and then now I'm at 225 this year so within 12 months like I said I gained over 150 different listings in 26 states so they saw that as an actual you know growth metric that I achieved from last year to this year so they sponsored me this year just to be here. Can I ask how old you are? 34. My yeah, birthday was last no, month. I like the, I'm, I'm 50 years old. I like the discipline. Yeah, no, I man. like the feel. You know, yeah. wanna wanna I, you know I'm dedicated my next 10 years to this so i want to continue to learn and be educated and just grow the the vibes b and b to be you know the best product out there yes yeah, I'm, I'm gonna use it yeah for sure we I'm need gonna... to get i need to get some cultivation places because there's a lot of um, a lot of people asking to to uh tour uh grow houses and think cultivation centers just to see how the lights work how different things are put together you know a lot of people that didn't know that you needed different lighting for germination and growing and curing and all these different things so there's a big educational thing when it comes to 
people visiting our uh, our platform because they want to learn more about different things that uh, are attached to it. But you guys can hook up afterwards. This is one of the things we like doing meet and chat and, uh, and, uh, and introducing people. Yeah, so for sure, it, man. This is really, really cool. Shout out so to Meetup Podcast. Thank you, Dustin, Dante. Yeah, and we'll good vibes you, all we'll day. See you soon. This has been another episode of Meet Unshackled. All right.